So my next guest is co-counsel for Nicholas Sandman, Todd McMurtry. Good to have you with us, uh, Mr. McMurtry. You heard our, our discussion. Um, what is your argument going to be that Nicholas Sandman is not, in this case, a public figure who cannot say that he's been libeled? Well, good evening, Martha. Good evening. Um, I think it's pretty simple. When you look at the, the as you say, the jurisprudence in this uh, matter, to go from a private figure to an involuntary public figure, there has to be a public controversy. And then you have to do something or fail to do something, knowing that by your actions or failure to act, that you may create a, a publicity for yourself. In this circumstance, Nick Sandman did not do anything and he didn't know that there was any public controversy. He was merely waiting to board a bus to come back to Covington, Kentucky, where he lives. And uh, Nathan Phillips simply walked up to him. Uh, Nick did nothing after that. So I don't think Nick's done anything that would, that would take him from a private figure to an involuntary public yeah. figure. You feel personally that this case is a very big deal. Um, you, you say that you, as an attorney, you don't always get to deal with cases that you're so passionate about. Why are you so passionate about? What do you think is represented in this case? Well, I, I'm, I'm very passionate about it, A, because of Nicholas Sandman. I mean, Nicholas is a wonderful young man. He's 16 years old. I've had two sons, you know, who have gone through the age of being 16. And when I see people like yeah. the Washington Post, you know, ignore the facts and destroy a young man's life in the way that they have done to Nicholas Sandman. As a parent, I feel passionate. And then just as an attorney, I feel passionate because I heard the introduction and I think the status of the law today uh, is, is needs to be changed so that a person like Nick, so that a Twitter mob uh, cannot attack him, it needs to be changed so that when a organization like the Washington Post decides to write an article without doing any investigation and breaching every journalistic standard out there, that they can be held accountable. And I'm confident that, that we are going to uh, prevail on this argument. Uh, and so I'm very passionate about the law as let, well. Let me ask you, how many of these other cases that we mentioned are you working on already? Are you actively going after the New York Times, CNN, Elizabeth Warren, um, Alyssa Milano, a bishop was also mentioned in this? Tell me. Yes, what we are doing is we are systematically going through all the information that we've received, and there are you know hundreds and if not more thousands of these people out there that are in, that you know said terrible things about Nicholas Sandman and his family. So we're looking at those and we're sending letters to them, asking them to retract their statements and to preserve their documents. And the names of the people that you mentioned are all people that we believe have crossed the line and violated the law and violated Nick Sandman's rights. So yes, we're looking at every one of those people. You know, how did you arrive at $250 million? And I just want to play a comment from Judge Napolitano earlier on that, that dollar figure today and his take on it. Let's watch. So they demand more than they could possibly get. Other lawyers know you can't demand a number in court unless you can actually prove that. And I suggest to you it's impossible to prove damages for a 16-year-old to reputation of $250 million. What do you say to that, sir? Well, I think that with all res due respect to Judge Napolitano, um, my co-counsel in this case is Lynn Wood, who's really the number one national libel and defamation lawyer. He and I have discussed this. We do feel very confident that we can prove very substantial damages for Nick Sandman. I mean, if you just look at the fact that he's 16 years old, he probably has another 70 years of life or more on this planet, and everything he does every day for the rest of his life is going to be affected. Nick is also a very intelligent person who could do very well and will do very well in school, but every job interview that he, that he goes on, he's going to show up on the Internet, and they're going to say, oh, Nick Sandman. I'm not sure if my clients or my customers would want to talk to Nick. So this is going to follow him around his entire life, and I think that, that if if you consider I guess you could that, make the argument it, it, that it might that it might that. serve him well in some cases. Well, it could, but also, you, you know, Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post, and Jeff Bezos is worth billions of dollars. Nick Sandman could be the next Jeff Bezos, but this uh, could get in his way in life. And, and I think if you compare the reputation of a 17-year-old or 16-year-old, it has enormous potential. We don't know what it is. I think that a, juror, a jury in Covington, Kentucky, is going to find in Nick's favor, and I think we will be able to prove those damages. All right. Well, my last question for you is uh, with regard okay. to a story that just broke this evening which claims that you and your 
co-counsel on this, uh, Lynn Wood, made what they're calling a rookie mistake in terms of the amount of time that you allowed the Washington Post to respond or to retract their statements about this story before filing this lawsuit. They say you have to give them 10 days and that you gave them, I think it was five or six. Well, that's just not true. The statute is very plain in the way it's worded in Kentucky. It does allow a, a newspaper like the Washington Post to, to retract its story 10 days after we make a demand. There's nothing in there that says you can't file suit before that 10 days expires. So there's no mistake. That's just people who are trying to promote their agenda, uh, misreading a very plain statement in Kentucky. So, law. Do, you, so I mean, do you think that there's any wrong. chance that the Washington Post is going to do that, that they're going to retract their reporting on this story? Uh, they can try. Uh, ultimately, that's an issue for a jury, whether their retraction is sufficient. And again, 12 people in northern Kentucky will, will be able to decide whether or not the Washington Post has, has done a sufficient job of retracting the terrible lies they've told about Nicholas Sandman. Well, we look forward to finding this case. It's going to be a, a very interesting case to watch with the larger implications as well. Todd McMurtry, thank you so much. Good to have you here tonight, sir. Thank you very much. Good evening.